Hello guys, welcome to High Vibe In It. Lindsay here, and before we get into the great stuff we have planned for you, I wanna talk about a new sponsor that I'm super excited about, um, StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps your loved ones tell the story of their lives through thought-provoking questions about their memories and personal thoughts. Every week, StoryWorth emails your family member, or you in my case, because I started doing it for myself, uh, a different story prompt, questions you've never thought to ask, like what have been some of your life's greatest surprises and what's one of the riskiest things you've ever done. And after one year, StoryWorth will compile every answered question and a photo you choose to include in a beautiful keepsake book that is shipped for free. You never know what family history StoryWorth will uncover. And I know I've had so much fun. I've been doing it for about, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks, and every day or every week they send you a new one, a new question. And I've had so much fun thinking about things that I haven't really thought of in years. It's really, really cool. You should check it out. And Kelsey, tell them what they get. Uh, yeah, you guys, this, this service, first of all, I want to say it's really cool because I know a lot of families aren't used to being super vulnerable and talking about these things face to face. So it's a nice medium to bring you guys together and still kind of extract that information out of them and bond with them um, yeah. in a maybe a non awkward way if your family's not super like gushy or like vulnerable. <laughs> So if you want to preserve and pass on your memories with StoryWorth, the most meaningful gift for your family, then sign up today by going to storyworth.com slash vibin. You'll get 20%, oh, not, not 20%, $20, 20 US dollars off your first purchase. <laughs> That's storyworth.com slash vibin for $20 off. It's really cool, really fun. So that said, today, you guys, I'm so excited for this episode. We have my good friend and channel, Grace Cavanaugh, is here with us. Um, some people listening might know of her already, but if you don't know, she is a channel, a medium, an intuitive, a, a spiritual mentor, teacher, and a wonderful human. So, hi, Grace. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to be here with you both. Yes. So uh, I guess the first place, I know Kelsey really hasn't met you before. So um, why don't you tell her and everyone else listening how you got started and really maybe better than I can explain what you do. Oh, okay. I am a channeler. Um, and, you know, uh, at this point, I, I kind of lump it all into an, an, a spiritual teacher, guide, mentor. Um, I'm also a therapist and, um, uh, you know, I don't like the word psychic, but it happens. <laughs> I am a very clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, especially. And um, so all of those things combined make me uh, sort of the whole of my life's mission and really the reason why I was born, because I really actually... Um, have a constant sort of memory of being a little girl and remembering that I was here for a very specific mission and having a lot of um, visionary states and out-of-body experiences with angels, et cetera, um, showing me that future. And so after a really pretty intense awakening about 15 I don't know, 15 or more years ago, um, I've been on that course really consciously aware of that mission and the, and the work that I do. So meanwhile, I'm also a mother and, you know, a uh, avid seeker of the awakening of consciousness. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, I channel the divine feminine and I channel a collective called Osira. And Osira was the first sort of initiation, the really groundbreaking change in my life when they came in and I started on that road to be able to channel the way that I do and um, fully um, accepting the mission, you could say. <laughs> that is the, so fascinating. The mission being, do you have like a mission statement? Well, you know, my mission, if I'm going to say a mission statement, I sure don't like the word mission statement. It sounds so formal. I am so informal. <laughs> yeah. I am super like um, real, just living it, being it, transforming myself to be the greater version of myself so that I can do all that I am here to do before I die. And um, my mission in a sense would be to bring more light and awakening and consciousness, love and um, awareness to what we don't see in everyday life that we've been programmed to see in everyday life. Love it. 
Yeah. Yes. And I, well, I heard about you, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago I was studying hypnosis. We, we went mm-hmm. to the same training program and you came mm-hmm. in during the past life certification right. and uh, through our mutual friend, Michelle. Hi, Michelle, if you're listening. What's up? <laughs> uh, but you came in and did a, a quick channeling with Osira. And I remember just being blown away. I, I've never seen anything like it. I had never in my entire life seen anything like what you did or, you know, what they kind of allowed you to do, I guess. Yeah, what they did. Um, but it was so palpable, the energy in the room. And it was, it, it still to this day is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. You have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. And today, hopefully you'll get a taste of it because you're going to do a little channeling for us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I'm so. And it is palpable. I mean, it's palpable even online because I do online sessions all over the world, but I didn't start out like that. And, um, you know, it started out as in person and, um, uh, it also, in the way that I channel, it, start, it started out with a lot of practice because I was super resistant. Mm-hmm. I was like in, you know, 15 or 18 years ago, people were not as like, I mean, I'm not saying they weren't open because I mean, in all honesty, we know that many channelers have been around for a long, long time. I just had to go through my own process with accepting this sort of ability and the gift of it and get out of my ego and fear-based, what are they going to think of me thing. And so that took some time and it took a lot, actually a lot of practice to get actually honestly, truly good. I was very concerned about my own con- um, integrity, about it being authentic. Yeah. And so, you know, when you say that, like from back then, how much it impacted you and that it was viscerally real for you, um, that is a wonderful confirmation of that intentional work in the beginning because I, I worked for a, at least a year solidly every week with a couple of people to get my own baggage out of the way, my own ego. I, I, there's not a filter of grace here when I channel. And so that was, I mean, I do believe I was wired for this full mm-hmm. on, but it took work to get to the space and the place that I am for sure for today. But even 15 years ago, I was working on being um, like what you could say is, um, a clear, true source of channeling. Um, and, you know, some people really, really love it and some people just don't. And that's okay. It hits the right people and it opens yeah. up like with you and so many other people I've met over the time, over the years is it hits the right people and the right message at the right time. Which is true for anything, you know, I've, I've totally, I mean, I'm just, i in normal, regular, general circles, I'm like the weird one because I do hypnosis. <laughs> and and but but compared comparatively speaking, I'm pretty norm. I'm pretty not as woo as some people could be, which I know that's got like a negative connotation. But I love that word. I just think it. I it. I embrace it so well. Yeah. But speaking of words, you mentioned that you didn't like um, the word psychic. Okay. Why don't you like the word psychic? I need to know. Yeah. So the, tr- the, the, the shift on that is um, just for me personally, um, I didn't, I didn't like the, the feeling that I um, felt when people put that to me sort of, and I was like, okay, but so the, the psychicness is, I think even in and of itself, I think it's limiting. So intuition is, a lesser version, in my opinion, because in psychicness, in my mediumship, in the, in the clairvoyance, I see things and they're accurate and I know them to be true and I test them and accept things like that. But people, um, I think there's a lot of, you're, you can be pulling a lot of information when you're being in a psychic state. Um, but the connection to your intuition can also, <clears throat> well, what do I want to say that? connection to your intuition feels um like we all have it i believe we all are psychic if you will you know um i think we all have these innate abilities but some of us are more accessing them so Mm -hmm. psychicness is like i don't want to be labeled the limit of psychic or medium i don't because i'm using anything and everything that is an attunement to my greater expansion. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. I think you're so doing you a... feel like it's limiting just yeah. because of people's yeah. preconception and everything. Yes. And exactly. I think when you were saying everyone is psychic, it basically just depends to what degree, like that's really true. And a good metaphor for that, if people are like, wait, I'm not psychic. I don't have the ability to have psychic abilities. It's like everyone, basically everyone can sing, but not everyone is Andrea Bocelli and just born like a super freaking gifted singer, you know? So anyone can practice singing and get better, but some people are better at singing than others naturally, just like some people are better at channeling naturally than others, or some people are more clairvoyant than others, or some people are more clairaudient. It's just up to the individual. We're all unique in our own little ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I would consider all of those labels. Yeah of the things that I can be and do that I am that they those are like these strands of light that run through me and I'm sort of plugged into any of them at any given time and kind of all the time it's just a matter of my my kind of focus with them yeah Mm -hmm. um now when I I haven't worked with you in a while but I know that like when you would when I would do a session with you and you would come back to yourself or rather the channel would close. I don't know how you term it, but when you would come back, you would not have any recollection of what was said. And I would be like in awe, like what? <laughs> and you're like, what did I say that? Oh, I, they said that. Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. Like you didn't really, you weren't present in what was coming through, which I think is just another confirmation that this is not being filtered through you. Yeah. You're, you're being used as the vessel, but yeah. you're, and, and they use a lot of, I know they use a lot of your language and symbols because that's just how they can get their point across through the brain of grace or the mind. Yeah. But, um, do you, is that still the case? Like, do you still have, uh, the, the, I guess amnesia, is that the word that we should use? Yeah, I guess you could say, <laughs> I guess um, you could say <laughs> some, some, some of the, most of the time. Yes. And then there's sometimes where I'm like, uh, able to, um, so a lot of times what happens is um, I actually do not remember, but I will have sort of a um, inner um, clairvoyant uh, stamp, like a vision, a thing that I see, like a picture, and I'll see a scene or something like that, and, <clears throat> but it's always like a fading dream, and it's always going yeah. quickly, really quickly. So sometimes when I'm coming back, I will hear it, feel it sense a lot of the things that were said or the energy overall, things like that. Um, Definitely visions and states of things I saw that they were seeing in order to get their point across. Yep. So I'll see that, but it's fading really, really fast, like a dream. And I also feel that there's not, there's just, I, I, I think I just intuitively knew in the beginning that it is not really, first of all, it's not really my business Mm -hmm. Um, If it's for like a one-on-one and that by osmosis, honestly, I felt like I would keep what were the teachings or what was the gifts or what was the, the things that were important on some level for me as a human being, but I I wasn't invested or worried or, or concerned that I didn't remember because it was for you or it was for the group or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I have a question for people who want to expand their channeling abilities for personal development reasons. So let's say you want to be able to channel your higher self or channel different aspects of yourself or channel whatever, anything with the consciousness can be channeled. What are some of the ways that people can start doing that? Because you mentioned that you had worked with some people, like what type of work were you doing that was helping you to open up your ability? That I was doing no, that opened up my abilities. And I wasn't, I wasn't opening, I wasn't working with anybody at that point. What, mm-hmm. what it was is actually, I personally had a, a, a radical, I often call it a happening to me. And it was yeah. really that my, um, my life had taken a pretty intense shock. My father was killed and, and it just opened my, I just opened up and was going through a spiritual experience. And, um, that's what set me down the path. I mean, I was always a seeker. Um, but so I honestly, here's a funny thing that I often share is that I wasn't learning this to be this and I wasn't doing it. I was doing it because I had to, because there was no other choice. It was just in my life and a part of the experience that I was having. So, um, I learned not from anyone else, but by my own default of stumbling and bumbling through the dark of what was happening for me. 
you know, I'm noticing that there's so much more wonderful information out there now. So when I share or teach or guide other people about how to get to this kind of ability, if you will, um, it starts with lots of little things. It starts with how you key in, how you listen to your inner self, how the one biggest key that I believe fully brought me into uh, the awakening place with my abilities was meditation. Yeah. Dieting and stilling the mind was the thing that had basically Osira knocking on the door with me. And I did not expect it, but I wasn't unfamiliar with mm -hmm. channeling or clairvoyance or all those things. It's just, I sure didn't expect, I knew I was highly intuitive at that point. I knew that I was oftentimes quite psychic, but I didn't think that, oh, you know, I'm going to figure this out so I can channel. I started meditating out of the need for the fact that I was so anxious and had so much stress from all the things that had been happening in my life that I um, was in this kind of zone. And it opened up that pineal gland and it opened up the kundalini in my life and it just shifted me besides meditation. I was doing a lot of yoga. I was doing clean eating. I was doing a lot of things that the body kind of needs to do to prep. And I was also willingly um, super sensitive. <laughs> I was listening. I was looking at the signs. I was watching and feeling my um, awareness. Like I was tuning in. Yeah. And that was, um, I, I also recognize that I, you know, for other people, when I'm teaching them and talking about them, I think, I, I think that it is very important to pay attention to your own inner guidance. What's, what's happening in there? Are you, and then to discern what it, you play with it, you play with your own psychic awareness, you play with, um, you know, the signs, things like that. I don't have a formula. I can't tell anybody else how exactly to get there. I can only be sort of a guide when you're having your things happening. Yeah. And you do work with people, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So how, what, tell us a little bit about what kind of programs you, you um, welcome others into. So um, I started doing this um, about five or six years ago. I started doing uh, the, I call it the level one, two, and three workshops. They're intuitive expansion and channeling, awakening the mystic. And all of that is like a big pot of everything I've ever learned and done. And the pitfalls, the things that, you know, I found and that may work for you, but, you mm -hmm. know, kind of sent me down a rabbit hole and didn't so work for me. So, but I bring everything up that I have ever done or tried, right? And, um, and then, you know, I was, again, super resistant because I didn't understand how to, how to be a teacher of intuition and all the things. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and yet Osiris just kept saying, you need to do workshops. And everybody outside of me, all my clients were saying, you need to teach this stuff. You need to do workshops. They need to teach this stuff. And so one day I was sitting there and they literally said, just make the class, the workshop, and we will teach it with you. And the moment I heard and really like got that in my body. I was like, oh, well, that takes the pressure off. Yeah. So all I did was make this class available and know my bullet points of everything I had sort of gone through. And then I, I let them teach the rest of the class. And overall, I mean, they teach, they guide, they inspire, they give their wisdom, but they're not, they're not, they're also teaching broadly. They're not saying, okay, this is step A and through Z. And in order to get the thing you want, you have to do A through Z. They're, they're giving us a lot of information and every individual then takes that energy and all of those pieces and works it in within their own frequency. And I think that's more right than any formula that I could ever give. Yeah. That's so cool. I really like Because that. it that really doesn't work. I found out. Like, well, everything doesn't work for everyone. Like how you said, right. that's right. the thing. Everyone's got to feel it out for themselves, you know? Yeah. I knew, and I knew that because I mean, like my path was not my path was alone. I was doing and learning and being this very much on um, a singular, like trying to figure it all out. I mean, honestly, I remember this is this one piece of little story that I always tell is that like, this was in 2005 and six, I was on the internet 
which we didn't have Facebook, like the way that we do now, we didn't have all that stuff. And this was, you know, I was like, I felt very new to it all. And I'm literally on the internet going like, who can help me understand what I'm seeing? Cause I was seeing major visions. I was seeing, I was going through things where people were showing up in the middle of the night. I was waking up, walking around and seeing these people who'd passed in my space. I was seeing these other guides and these definitely light beings that were not of this world having communication with me telepathically. And I thought, you know, the good thing is, is that I was, I knew I was, you know, having a spiritual experience that I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't drinking or drugging or doing <laughs> anything that would alter my mind yeah. because, you know, I wasn't having a psychotic break but it was really hard to navigate. And I didn't have anybody who was like in my life going, hey, we, I, we didn't have YouTube where mm -hmm. everybody was talking about everything. So I was one time literally going, oh my God, okay, what, what, what? Like witches, maybe they'll help me. And I'm like, witches and visions. I'm trying to find <laughs> a teacher, no joke. Wow. Find a teacher. Like who does this? Warlocks, witches. You know, that's like, I mean, I'm just thinking crazy things because I was going through such a weird experience. And it was right after I was divorced and I was raising two little girls and it was super intense with no one to go, hey, you're just having, I knew in my heart I was having a spiritual experience, but nobody was there going, okay, you're just having a spiritual experience and yeah. these are the steps to take. It but, sounds like what people term as like a kundalini awakening. I've heard that term a lot and it sounds very similar to the symptoms that I've heard people having. Yeah, um, is, it can be. And I would say yeah. it was, there was a time def definitely where I had a kundalini awakening. So when yeah. I, when I, I believe I started to really really like have a wake up experience an awakening starting in 2005 and in 2000 and then i was in that experience and then in 2007 i had a full-blown kundalini experience and that lasted for many months and um was really hard to stabilize but you know we get through these things. Some people, I felt like it was the, what they also called the dark night of the soul. So we also, we merge these concepts, but I think we all have these existential, you know, places of life where we expand into the moreness of us, you know, the, the bigger aspects of our abilities and our attunements. I like to consider that because we're all, you know, energetically plugged into so much more. Yeah. And we should note and make it okay that sometimes, most of the time, it's not pretty. And also, right. it's going to be really fucking uncomfortable. So yeah, if you're going sure. through the shit, it's for a reason. You're not crazy and you're not alone. And it happens to everyone at some point or another. That's right. And it's not a one-shot deal. I will say that yeah, it's not multiple uh, <laughs> deep dives into the darkness of transformation and transmutation. Um, one of those key components that definitely can do that for people is death and death mm -hmm. of people and family and things like that you know that's one of the deep dives that transforms us to our mortality and then to our everlasting eternalness so there's if you're if you're not stuck in just the grief you can really use any kind of dark place that you go through as a transformation of your consciousness and your spirit in my opinion it's been my my experience yeah I would relate to that experience too, because I would say recently I've been going through almost like my second dark night of the soul, if that's what you want to call it. Like in right. high school, I suffered from severe depression for years and then I finally got better and everything was great and amazing and high vibing and love and life. And then it was like, okay, I'm bored of my life. Everything's great. Now let's move across the country. And then like shit hit the fan again. And I'm just like, oh, here we are again in the dark <laughs> space. I know Moving you. into new territories. I remember you. You're back. Just to wake you up <laughs> a little more. Yep. yep <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it's such a path of growth, you know, and I think, um, very subconsciously and um, spiritually speaking, we put ourselves to the test over and over again to essentially, as Osiris says, wake ourselves up in the body before we die. So like, that's mm -hmm. it. Because who wants to, I mean, really, I mean, it's hard. It's absolutely horribly hard sometimes. Life, you know, is not an easy um, initiation, but when we make it through and we come out that other side and something has been reborn within us, you know that 
there's there it, it's not for nothing mm -hmm. and yeah. that 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 deep and dark night of the soul is bringing you through the fire of change and change is the thing we're here to experience for our souls yeah they grow oh that growth word grow <laughs> Yeah. And be more you than you've ever been in your whole life, at least in this life. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. another thing I always joke about because in one of, I think it was our first session, I asked you, how many lives have I had? That was my main question. How many past lives have I had? And Osiris said somewhere around 1,500. And then they had to go and say that Abel's had like 1,800. <laughs> and I'm like, where the heck was he for 300 years without me? Um, but yeah, I always joke about that because I always thought it was like 20, 25, 30, but 1500 is a ton of lives. It's a lot more than 30. It's a lot more than 30. <laughs> and I still to this day, I'm like, holy crap, really? But time, you know. You know, and that's so interesting because I've literally heard my clients that and seen like this sort of like, it's not even funny how I see sort of the Akash. Akashic record yeah. moving, moving, moving. And it's like, I see all this humongous and people, they're like, it's not, I would say, um, I have literally seen people and heard them that they have sort of, you know, thousands and thousands and yeah. thousands and thousands of life. And here's the thing that can be like, you could have like a hundred thousand lifetimes and that doesn't make sense yeah. to us right. in our logical linear timeline that we're believing in. And, but this is not that we, you got, it's like, that's that you got to get beyond that. Even the concept of like time in years of the linear look back to what, Oh, we've been here 300,000 years or less. Oh, we've been here at 2000 yeah. 2, years since Jesus, whatever the, the timeline construction is I'm sorry to say pretty much bogus when it comes oh, yeah. to the soul and the uh, I think you know and they also say like I could go off so many tangents because one thing Osara <laughs> said is like you know you're 10 years ago they were saying things like your science is going to uncover that the timeline on earth is not right because you're mm -hmm. going to discover so much um, under the sea and under the um, land of artifacts and temples, yes. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we've only just begun to really see that. And so what's going to have to happen in the future is they're going to have to recalibrate the, com the, the current timeline. Yeah. And that's that's going to be a disruptor of people's paradigms. And well, you know, as far, and just one more thing, and just as far as the idea of like, oh, really, you could have a hundred thousand lifetimes? Well, those lifetimes don't even have to be, this is sorry, is going to burst other people who I'm going to love this. It. Go ahead. They're not going to like it. Some people don't like these ideas, but um, you don't have to live a long life to mm -hmm. have a soul incarnate for its highest purposes. So if yeah. you only lived for six months, because that's how the timeline was, it was difficult to sustain life. That doesn't mean that's a wrong thing. Yeah. Exactly. There's, it's just there's our soul perception. growth there. Yeah. And we keep coming back to build upon that. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. So when we come back from the break, you're going to do some channeling. So if you guys are intrigued to see her in action, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for this. This is like. <laughs> Don't build about that much. No, well, I, I just, I, for my own selfish reasons, I'm so excited to see this. So we're going to take a quick break. But before we do, I want to talk about one more sponsor that we've been really loving, Kelsey and I. Um, Skillshare, you guys. Skillshare is an online learning community for the creator and all of us. They have thousands of classes in photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. I'm taking an interior design class for myself and also for my business, social media, nice. uh, to hone my skills in the online presence. Um, they have really thousands of classes. They're super high quality. Um, they're on demand, so you can learn at your own pace, get inspired, join a class, create something you'll love. If you want to get back into an old passion or even learn something new, you can build, fuel, and expand your creative fire with Skillshare. Um, you guys get something really cool from Skillshare, and Kelsey can tell you all about it. Yeah. So Skillshare is one of our most generous sponsors, I would say, because they're giving everyone yeah. two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. So you guys can literally go to Skillshare.com forward slash vibe and to sign up and you'll get two months of classes for free. And the cool thing about Skillshare is 
once you're in, you have access to all the classes. So you don't pay for each class. It's more like a membership and then you get access to everything. So, I mean, I found classes on there about like macrame. Um, there's like cake decorating, like anything you could think of that's fun and artistic, which I love anything creative, you'll find it on Skillshare. So go to skillshare.com forward slash vibin and you'll get two months of classes for free. Skillshare.com forward slash vibin. Go get it, have fun, and we'll be right back with Grace and her amazing ability to channel Osira or whoever decides to show up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. It's Kelsey Aida here, your favorite inspirational blogger and author. And before we dive into Grace doing some channeling for us, I want to tell you guys about one of our new favorite sponsors. We have lots of favorite sponsors, as you can tell, because we only talk about products that we really, really do genuinely love. And one of my new favorites is BetterHelp. Um, BetterHelp is essentially a way for you to get access to therapy, counseling, um, support online, and it's really affordable really cool because you can meet with a therapist like via video chat or on the phone. You can text your therapist. Um, you can get started with someone in under 24 hours. And this is a service that I'm personally using. Um, it's really awesome. My therapist is really cute, really nice, really helpful. I've had two sessions with her so far and all I have is great things to say about BetterHelp. So if you guys need to talk to someone, if you want some emotional support, if you're looking for a little guidance in your life, it's never a bad idea to work with a professional. So high vibin it listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code vibin. So if you've been wanting to talk, you can get started right now. Just go to betterhelp.com forward slash vibin. They'll have you fill out a quick questionnaire to get you matched with the right counselor for you. And let's say worst case scenario, you don't love your counselor. You can always switch around. It's not a problem. Just go to betterhelp.com forward slash vibin and you'll get 10% off your first month of a service that's already, in my opinion, much more affordable than regular therapy. So definitely go check it out. Go check it out. So I can't wait anymore. Are you ready, Grace? <laughs> yeah. Is the ready. cyber ready? Okay. So when we, when, when, when Grace goes in, I think if I remember correctly, Osira will just kind of start talking and then um, either, like you said before, do a quick download and just like give us a bunch of information or maybe open for questions. If you guys caught the number and we have time for questions, call in because this is going to be really good. You can ask pretty much anything you can think of and she can access or Osira can access the Akashic Records and give you information on whatever it is that your heart desires. So whenever you are ready, Grace. Okay. Um, ready. So <clears throat> just for people who haven't seen or heard me at least, um, I just close my eyes, I just breathe, and then I let them come forward and they will, like Lindsay said, just say what they feel is the most important. I wouldn't say they feel, but is the thing that they want to offer this day. And then um, if there is time for questions, they'll say so. Okay, I'll see you soon. I have to yawn every time. <sighs> <clears throat> Mm, indeed greetings to you dear ones we are that one known as osira and we are in fact as always overjoyed to be in this alignment with you all we are recognizing the opportunity we are recognizing the way in which the energy is shifting and moving energy frequencies between the all of you in the recognizing of this time space continuum we are in this moment very clear that we are what you could say, consider a, a light force, council of light, you could say, of guardianship that assists our human friends at this time on the third dimensional realm of the changes that are occurring for humanity overall. This great time to be alive is the most opportune moments of your experience as a soul as you elevate the consciousness together. That is occurring in your world in ways that 
do at times seem dramatic. We know, we understand, we see how it is that you all individually and collectively are essentially bridging worlds. You are bridging the old out and clearing it to become the new. Mm. We are recognizing a new way, new paradigms, new thought forms, new constructions of belief that are creating the potential realities of what you would call the future timelines. And these future timelines are indeed good. We see to say to many of our human friends as we speak this day that the conversation is uh, one of the way in which love can transform all parts of your being, all ways of relating to the world experience. And we know that that can be one of the most challenging. We are not giving it, a, the word, the word, the word, syrupy ideas. We are not giving it the ideas of being such a syrupy, anything is fixed with love. But we do mean that too at the same time. We are recognizing that the opportunity this day blends, or we would say merges, in the consciousness for many, many, many people. So we would like to sort of open the idea stream of what to engage with because we can see that we would like to hit the hearts and minds, the soul of you all on many different levels. And yet we would like to have an offering. What would serve best for the collective whole? So shall we begin with any questions, dear ones? Yes, thank you for being here, first of all. And I have a question just out of sheer curiosity. So I am of the understanding that we're all helping each other in different ways. And of course, you're here to help humanity. And I'm curious about your intention as to why. What's in it for Osira if we are helped by you? Ah, so we kind of very much appreciate that connection of the question. Here is what we would say about that. There is no actual separation between Osai Ra and that which you are. What we would say to you in a certain kind of sense, though this can definitely trigger people, we would say is the idea that we are essentially your future, you are our past. To say that we are you is a little bit ambiguous, we know, but to say that there is no separation at least brings you closer to the idea that there is really only one here. That too is a challenge for people because they are living in the third dimensional reality as a sole expression of the one consciousness of creation, believing it is separate. So you are not that what is not us. And so we speak in the words, we come forward to be guardianships or help you or et cetera, et cetera. It's just the languaging to like we are doing, bridge worlds with you. You have this idea of the world as it is, the world of form, your body, each other. You are part of the system of families and you are helping each other. That is true, but really there is only one there. It is uh, that idea. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Mm. Do you have another question, Kelsey? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, hi, Osira. Lindsay here. I was just, um, I guess I don't really have a specific question, but I'm very open to hear what kind of message I should have today or the, the main theme of which I should know for today. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> mm, we are recognizing the joyful heart, the way in which some of you are participating, saying, well, let's ask this question. Let's ask that question. And meanwhile, Let's say to you that the offering this day is the most potent if you concentrate on that which your own soul is bubbling up. What it is it that feels the most creative? What is it that feels the most, oh, the word, the word, the word, ang ang the angle of joy? One of the reasons why we often talk about joy, love, light, it is not so that we are again, the word, the word, the word, being syrupy, or we are the word, the word, spiritually bypassing. We can talk about any of the depths you want to talk about. We can reflect to you the things that would help in the experience of being human. But it is that what you concentrate on, what you focus your intention on, what you uh, 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 go round and round and round and round with is that what you feel in the inherent body system of the creation that you are so we often talk about a lot of light joy the ways in which you can find creativity the feeling of the expression of I'm living my best life because the more you focus on that literally, the more you literally breed it within yourself and it can manifest outside of you. The trick is that a lot of people tend to not know how to be okay with living their best life. 
You have been in a system, a system, a system, a systemic system of the word, the word, the word, uh, not okayness, struggle. It is difficult. And yet that is a part of the reality stream that you come to quote, overcome. You don't overcome it by sheer force. You don't overcome it by sheer will. You don't overcome it because you should suffer. You technically overcome it by the way in which you allow and accept those experiences to move through you, literally to be the word, the word, the word, sift out the way that you sift flour, making it smaller and smaller and smaller. It becomes that which moves through you so much more easily. The suffering, the hardship, the pain, the agony teaches you much, but the more you realize how to shift into the sifting and let it move through you, the more that you learn how it is that you are up against yourself in regards to accepting that things are, can be happy, joyful, creative, abundant, peaceful, loving. And you will also bring to, we see that there was a bit of that conversation already. You will bring to yourself pieces of the puzzle of the whole that offers you the greatest experience to more of that allowance. So you will bring yourself to places where you do not allow love, where you do not allow forgiveness, where you do not allow kindness to yourself and others. These shifts, the way that judgment plays in, in your whole experience, brings to you the opportunity to see that judgment to transmute it and align with the higher dimensional frequencies of love on the earth, bridging to bring a new reality experience, a new humanity to the experience. We would say to you, what we see is a certain sense of the idea that you are at the precipice, you are putting your toes in new waters, and you are learning to understand how to be in these new waters individually, and then you are plugging that in collectively to each other. What a blessing that is, for you are then creating for your children and your children's children and your children's children the new world. We would say that that is ultimately something that many of you are thinking about, sometimes in fear, sometimes in worry, sometimes in the idea sphere that this won't even get that far, Osira, and we understand your ideas around that. And yet, we will tell you, the more you hold the frequency of the truth of love, of that life will thrive and prosper, and that there is growth pains in every experience of life, that you then become more harmonious to yourself, to your environment, to the world at large, and that anchors, literally anchors light upon the earth to transform it into a world that would feel most right, the one that you all really, really want. You are shifting. You are going through a major time of change. We say that this is a wonderful thing and we know it can be challenging. We hope that this helps or offers something this day. Thank you. That leads me to another question. Yay. Wonderful. (laughs) Um, So lately, this is something I've been exploring in my own personal life and trying to find the balance between feeling my emotions in a non-resistant way when heavy emotions come up that I don't necessarily prefer. Um, And I guess finding the balance between feeling in order to heal, to process and to move forward and the difference between doing that and wallowing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Mm -hmm. that make sense? Very much so. And we like the way you say it because we think that that word, the word, the word, the word, wallowing is quite fun. You can get very engaged with wallowing. It can serve something so that then you don't really move yourself forward or outward towards the greater experience because of the thing we said before. It is sort of that there is a sort of program within the program that says, don't be okay. Don't be okay. Don't be accepting of good. Feeling your feelings is the way through. Feeling them. Checking yourself, the word, the word, the word, with your wallowing. Checking yourself with Am I really done or is there more here? Is there something for me to, 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 to really mm, 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 stir in to the bigger equation of my wholeness? That's a good way to say it. And then feel, just feel. 
Look, see, and feel. Feel into it. And the truth is, you will know when you are done, essentially, yeah. being cooked with it all. Or if there is more, you will feel that. Becoming authentic with your true feelings is one of the greatest stances you can take. And there is true liberation there. Being authentic with your own feelings first. It means too to work it out within you. You don't always have to go out into the world and say, help me, this is it, is this it, is this it? Really go into yourself and ask yourself, is this true and am I ready to release it? That's a good way to begin. Yeah, I like those questions. Those are really helpful. Am mm -hmm. I done processing? Is there more processing? Am I ready to release it? Do I need to work a little more? And you'll know the answer inside. Very okay. good. And also, we like this the way that you are um, mm, 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 sort of the words frameworking it and, 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 and categorizing it. The other thing we would say is to be the, the, the registrar of your own frequency, really listening and seeing if it is that you are indulging, right? Because you are the one who knows. No one else can say you are or you're not. Even if they're correct, you won't believe them until it is felt within the body-mind consciousness of you. So you are your own best, word, 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 authority, you could say. Yes. And then I have another question that kind of goes along the same lines of does Osiris, from your perspective, do you believe that by feeling these heavy emotions, because there's a lot of teachers in the law of attraction space that say, oh, if you're depressed, you're just going to attract more things to be depressed about. Or, oh, if you're frustrated and you are in your frustration, you're just going to attract more things to be frustrated about. So I guess my question is, do you believe that that is true to an extent, or what's your perspective on that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We believe and say that there is validity in the feeling process of processing. Because if you negate it and you cut it off before it's really been fully allowed through the system, there is a cutoff, right? There is a push down. There is something that did not get its uh, true life form, not form, but the true life of itself moved through what it came to show you, essentially. And then there can be the stagnation of that. We also recognize these kinds of concepts that our human friends have been bringing to us in conversations in regards to the questions of reality and regards to spiritual bypassing. Oh, if it's all only this or that, then it's not uh, uh, really felt. So we are saying the middle of the road, the middle of the road, there is validity in feeling your feelings. And then there is validity in whether or not you are just only focused on it being all good, which is completely bypassing the fact that you have felt not so good. So there's this beautiful, never is there a black or a white, is there? And if there is, there is something to feel or do or see or learn or grow in that one side or the other, ultimately leading you back to the whole in the center. Does that make sense? Yeah. To me, it sounds like you're talking about integrating both. We would say so. Thanks. Well, thank you, Osira. This has been very enlightening. Do you have any other questions, Kelsey? Um, no, I'm just going to open it up to Osira if you feel that there's anything that the listeners need to know or any yeah. information that would be helpful to reinforce before you go. Well, one of the things we can say, it is our joy to be here in participation. We feel like we could have a mm, mm, hundred different more questions that would be <laughs> wonderful, exciting, and enlivening to get you stirring the pot of your own collective experience and that which you are bringing to yourself in the whole. We see to say to you that we really win wish to offer the idea that as you release the judgments within yourself, within that there is a righter or a wronger way to do any of it, that what is true for one is not the same as what is true for another, that the more you release those judgments within yourself, the more you free up all of that energy and each other 
to create that which you really want, which you really desire as a whole, which is really the truth of being, which is love, which is light, which is to feel and experience, in a sense, we will say heaven on earth. You all really, really, really want that. And there are, of course, those experiences that are not that. And the reason those are there is to bring more into focus of that which you want. And so we would say the more you individually focus on those things for within yourself, it literally creates a field, a morphic field of energy to connect to others who are doing the same. Essentially, you are doing that with your show here in this way. You are morphically, energetically igniting light and consciousness, sending it out to reach others, to inspire and enlighten the rest of those who would hear it too. That's all we are doing, and that's all you individually are doing. You're doing the collective as one and the one as the collective. We say it is a joyous and joyful time to be alive even when you are facing things that seem to you all to be the most dire, but it is not. You have, in a sense, lived this lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. The more you embrace that you are here in a joyful, loving state of light, ultimately, that when you lift off the physical plane of the body, you will remember, you will see, you will know, oh, that's right, that's why I came. And so we say that we say to you in this moment, bring that forward as much as you possibly can into your energy, into your thoughts, into your way of being and relating into the world, and that will ripple out. We look forward to more, and we bid you the most loving and magical and happy Abdu. Hello, Grace. Welcome back. <laughs> I always feel You're pressure. just in time. Just in time. <laughs> yeah, so perfect timing. We have about one minute left. That was so fascinating. Wait till you hear it back. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> now, tell what's your freebie real quick, just so we make sure to get it in. Oh, okay. So we have, uh, well, we have uh, something called uh, the World Bridger. In okay. Uh, experience and that is a meditation and activation and then you can just go to gracekavanaugh.com uh, for that and then there's also a um, I think we're doing a 20 percent off for your listeners of one-on-one -on -one session oh that's awesome a and Does it include the show hosts <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> of course <laughs> And, oh, awesome. um, the, and also uh, the Divine Feminine for um, a pretty great reduced like 222. Two, two so those yeah. are all on my website. And if you put in the code um, high vibe, I think it's high vibe instead of high vibin. Okay. You, um, it will be linked to your guys' show. Great. H-I-G-H-V-I-B-E. Uh -huh. High vibe. Okay. Yeah. Grace Kavanaugh with the code high vibe. Guys, go check out Grace. I can't her website's in the description. So yeah, we've got her website in the description. Um, also, quick thing, there's a few hours left of my Cyber Monday sale. So go to lindsayrobinson.com forward slash shop and everything is on sale. Price is marked. No code needed. Go to Kelsey's website. Get on her guest list for the retreat in February 2020. We love you all. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank for being you. Here. Thank you both so much. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>